Step eight is to translate your hand-drawn layout into an InDesign document. You will create an InDesign document with the correct number of core pages, and for our example, that would be four pages. We'll then add the total number of additional pages needed for your fold-out panels. Don't worry about where they land, they will end up becoming pages five through eight, and that's okay. We need to then turn page shuffling off so that we can drag and drop the pages to where we need them to be. And then last, we will drag and drop the new pages, which will be pages five through eight, into the correct positions as per the diagram. You can see from my example here that I created a new InDesign document that has four pages. I then went back and I counted all the extra pages that I need. And for my example, I need four more pages. And I added them to my document and they became pages five, six, seven, eight. Then I turned page shuffling off. So I went to the option flyout menu and chose allow document pages to shuffle. And while I was at it, I also allowed the selected spread to shuffle. Once you have page shuffling turned off, you can grab page eight and you can drag it up and attach it to one of the other pages. I'm going to recommend that you work backwards. We have a four page brochure, so I am going to start with page four and work forward. Because of the nature of InDesign, if you add a page next to page one, it will automatically change the page numbers to page two, three, and four. Even if it doesn't shuffle the artwork down to the other pages, it will still renumber your pages. And so if you have a drawing that says that you should add a page off to the right of page one and a page off to the right of page three and to the left of page two and the left of page four, if you start at the top and you do page one first, that page A that you add next to page one will become page two. Page two will become three and page three will become four. And it gets confusing. So always work backwards because you can add D and then C and B and A and every core page that you're looking for will still have the correct number. And you can see that I did that in this example. I drug page eight and I attached it next to page four. You can see that there's a C-shaped bracket. If I have that C-shaped bracket, it will attach to page four and you can see right here that it did. I then took the new page eight, which is now on the right-hand side, and I dragged that and I attached it next to page three because I'm following my diagram that says I should do that. You can see here that it attached to the right of page three. Again, I'm gonna take the new page eight and drag it and attach it to the left of page two because the diagram says to do that. If we keep going, we'll take the new page eight, which is the last page in the document, and we'll drag it up and we'll attach it to the right of page one. When you're done, you should have a core document, one, two, three, four pages. And each page should have a fold out representing two fold out panels. If I don't know how many panels you have that are folding out, take all the extra pages that are beyond your core and divide by two. Because every sheet of paper has a front and a back. And so a panel, one panel folds out, but it creates two pages. I've color coded it so you can see it a little bit better on this slide here. The blue pages represent our core. They would be the middle of our book if we were making a book. The first two purple foldouts are the foldout panel that comes off the front of the book or the brochure. And the second two purple pages represent the one panel that folds out off of the back of the book.